Uh, pass me the Hydra Spanner. Hydra Spanner. Oh, hold your horses. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, Roy. I'm just really ready to wrap up this project so I can get back to. Hey, David. Hey, Roy. Wow, I love coming down to the R&D deck. You guys always have the greatest toys. Say, is that a self-replicating bean jar? It's similar to a bean jar, yes, but it's still in beta testing. The world of classroom rewards will just have to wait. Now, I imagine that you're here for your combination holographic watch and personal transporter. It's right there on the table. So this is the Mark II Holo Watch. With this device, you'll be able to communicate with and assist teachers anywhere in What's the- What's this button do? Be careful. This is an incredibly powerful device with ramifications in the fields of hyperphysics, consciousness, and teacher support. Hey, you seem a little frustrated and, and tired. Is there anything I can do? No, 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 we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, fine. And Kyle, do try to bring the equipment back in one piece this time. Hmm. I hope they're okay. It's not like David and Roy to be so crabby and tired. I wish I knew I was bothering them. Hmm. Wonder what this does. Whoa. That was weird. Did I accidentally teleport? Isn't this Roy's cabin? Oh dear. Welcome to Launcher Classroom, I'm Kyle Pope. How are you? It's a question we get asked and ask routinely. So much that over time, it's lost its original meaning and has become a polite greeting. Can you imagine the look on a stranger's face if you started explaining exactly how you felt or what was happening in your life, it may lead to a pretty awkward social situation. Now, think about your students. I have to admit that I've been guilty of standing in front of the room and asking, class, how are you today? Only to be met with a few mutters. It wasn't the most useful interaction. But despite what meaning has evolved, the question, how are you, is an important one. As teachers, we must strive to ask questions and provide opportunities that allow students to understand and deal with their own feelings. Students who are self-aware and can manage themselves are students who are effective learners. When students gain these skills, they can begin to empathize with others, build stronger social interactions, and create a better classroom culture. All of this combined is known as social and emotional learning, and it's becoming increasingly important for educators to embrace. So today, on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to focus on some SEL techniques that you can use. But let's begin with a breakdown of the components of social and emotional learning. Social emotional learning, sometimes referred to as SEL, helps students develop the skills they need to manage their emotions. Whether you are helping students cope with negative emotions or teaching them how to be kind to others, this process is essential for student growth. As the leader in the classroom, students closely observe how you react in different situations and will often model their behavior after yours. Therefore, it is important for you to demonstrate self-control, appropriate emotional responses, and healthy coping mechanisms. These are the five key elements of the social and emotional learning process. Self-awareness is the ability to identify how you're feeling. It also helps you understand how your thoughts and emotions may affect the way you behave or respond. Self-management is the capacity to control your emotions. When you learn to positively cope with disappointment, frustration, and other strong feelings, you are exercising self-management. Social awareness is a skill that helps us learn to identify and empathize with another's feelings. It is also being able to accept that some people may not feel the same way we do. Relationship skills help you build and maintain healthy relationships with people from a wide range of backgrounds. Active listening, reading body language, and using that information to maintain open communication 
are all part of relationship skills. Responsible decision-making allows you to understand how your actions may affect other people. It also includes being able to make thoughtful decisions that take those potential effects into account. Students spend most of their waking hours in school with you, so it is natural that their social-emotional learning would take place with their teachers. When you create a safe, supportive learning environment, you help students learn the skills to understand themselves and build positive relationships with others. Every day, you model social-emotional learning for your students simply by checking in on them. And often, that's enough. Hey Jasper, how's it going? It's fine. It's not fine. It's so not fine. I just laughed like a horse when Arthur told a joke in the hall. It just came out all loud like that. I'm so embarrassed. Arthur won't want to be my friend. And everyone's going to call me Horse Guy. Sometimes, though, you need a strategy to help you get the bigger picture. How's this work going, Jasper? It's fine. I don't get it. I don't get the new kind of math problem. But Miss Rachel told me I was a math leader yesterday, so I can't ask for help. Pretend you get it, Jasper. Smile and nod. Asking how your students are isn't always enough. You have to give them a way to process their feelings. One way I do this is with a strategy called the stress thermometer. Let's take a look. I gave my students copies of the stress thermometer diagram. The levels correspond with the levels of stress we feel in different situations. Having a visual helps students identify where they are so they can start thinking of coping strategies. However, it can be hard to just start talking about your feelings. So I'm gonna model the activity first to make students feel more comfortable with it. Okay class, yesterday I was in a meeting. I was leading a group of teachers on a really important project. Suddenly, I realized I didn't remember all the steps. Everybody thought I had the answers, but I didn't. Where do you think my stress level was on the thermometer and why? My stress level I mean, your stress level was probably in the red because you were scared that people would think you didn't know what you were doing. That's a great guess, Jasper. Thank you. Clarice, what do you think? I think it was medium. Yellow, maybe. I think it would be way higher. Nah. Somebody out there knows the answer, so it's always okay to ask for help. Huh. After modeling the activity, give students some quiet time to reflect and write down their own feelings and stress levels on their thermometer sheets. When the class finishes with these, I'm gonna take them up and read them so I know what we can discuss in our individual conferences. Together, we'll talk about what we can do to deal with our emotions in a healthy way. Remember, it's very important to keep reflections like these confidential. However, if a student shares something that worries you, never hesitate to reach out to a school counselor. Using the stress thermometer on a regular basis lets you check in on your students while they check in on themselves. That's why social emotional strategies like these are so important. Hmm. Hey Jasper, what's up? Ms. Rachel, could we go back to page 41 tomorrow? There's one detail about that equation I could use some help with. Of course, Jasper. We'll check it out first thing tomorrow. I'm glad you asked for assistance. That's good leadership. Thanks. Oh, hi, Arthur. Hey, Jasper. Want to sit with me at lunch today? I've got a new comic book that I think you really might like. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably going to make me laugh. Cool. That'd be great. Hmm. 
<laughs> Students who can identify their feelings and cope with stress work better with one another, have more academic success, and will be more comfortable with you. Use the stress thermometer to start some healthy conversations that lead to a deeper level of self-awareness for your students. Great, Scott, what in the world is going on? There you are, Kyle. I'm glad I found you. My scanner has been picking up over 1,500 baculas of metaphasic radiation. Wait, are you saying? Yes, your new hollow watch has picked up on your desire to understand why Roy and David have been behaving so differently, and it's transported your consciousness into Roy's body. You're literally walking a mile in his shoes. Amazing. I look just like Roy in the mirror, but you can still see the regular me? Yes, and anyone viewing you on streaming media. So why does it work that way? It'd be too confusing otherwise. Look, let's see if we can find what's been causing Roy to be so tired at work. I think I figured it out. The pipe above Roy's sleeper sofa is so loud. It must be impossible to sleep in here at night. No wonder he's so exhausted. And to think, if this hadn't happened, then we'd have no idea what was going on with Roy at home. Should be a quick fix, though. Just tighten the quantum turbo bracket. Can't you? You're good at this stuff. No can do. I'm a hologram. You're using the holo projector up in mission control? Why don't you just come down here? Meh. Done. I hope Roy can get a good night's rest now. So, what happens next? I'll meet you in David's room. At its core, social-emotional learning is all about self-awareness and how to interact with others. It is already an integral part of the icebreakers you use to build rapport with your students. As a matter of fact, every effort you make to build a positive classroom community falls under the umbrella of social-emotional learning. Even though SEL is extremely important, so is instructional time. It can seem like a difficult task to balance the two. But you don't have to. SEL has a place within your instructional content, not just alongside it. Let's look at some of the ways you can incorporate social-emotional learning into your curriculum. Literature, social studies, and history objectives relate naturally to social-emotional learning because they reflect on the common human experience. Asking students to compare or contrast their own experience with that of a group of people or an historical figure will address both content standards and the SEL skills of self-awareness and social awareness. For instance, while studying and reading about women's rights to vote in the early 1900s, students can reflect on how unequal treatment has felt for them and how they have responded. With younger students, you can develop these skills when you read an illustrated narrative and pause to ask questions about the character's feelings. Questions like, how do you think Goldilocks feels about this? And what evidence makes you think she feels this way? Teach empathy and an understanding of other perspectives. No matter what subject or grade level you teach, you can add elements of social-emotional learning to many of your lesson activities. Have you ever used student interest as a hook into a lesson? Or have you given your students a scenario and asked them to discuss it in a pair or collaborative group? These strategies tie into self-awareness, social awareness, and relationship skills. What about student choice boards or projects for completion outside of school? Here's the good news. Those are all ways to reinforce self-awareness, responsible decision-making, and self-management skills. Tying social-emotional learning to your instructional objectives is a natural way to make content personally relevant and meaningful to your students. Purposeful planning with SEL in mind will foster personal and interpersonal skills in the classroom. So create opportunities for students to read, write, and talk, then watch as both social-emotional learning and content mastery increase.
Student journaling helps your students develop their writing skills and boost their critical thinking. But did you know that journaling can also promote social emotional growth, even if it's based on your instructional content? Sometimes students don't know how to bring up something they would like to discuss or talk about their experiences. That's where you can make your curriculum a conversation starter. When your students write about characters or historical figures dealing with some of the same feelings they do, they identify with others and, as a result, feel empathy for them. Let's explore. All right, everyone, we've been talking about the American pioneers and the westward expansion. It was an exciting, dangerous time. But did you know that you can relate their experiences to your own lives? But we live in the city. I've never been on a prairie. Good point, but we can use our imagination to take us there. Whoa. I'm going to guide my students' journey, I mean journaling, with three main questions. I'll set a timer for each one. Ready? First question. How do you feel in this new place and new situation? Excited! This is a cool adventure! Well, I think I'd miss my friends back home. Asking students how they would feel in a situation might seem simple. However, it's an important bridge for students to feel personally involved with your content while enlisting their emotions, something they don't always consider during your instruction. Okay, second question. How do the pioneers feel? How can you tell? Tired. This is a long journey. Look at their faces. I think they're hopeful. They really wanted something new to travel all this way. Asking students about the feelings of the characters in your content is really important. This is how your students learn why these events matter. It's also how they develop their ability to empathize for the characters and for others in general. Your younger students or those who are still developing as writers might need some visual help. Think about giving them art, picture books, or cartoon strips to help them see emotions. They can draw their responses in their journals too. Okay, final question. What would you do in this situation? I would talk to some of the people I meet along the way. But I'd be careful. You don't know if they're nice. I had to talk to the new people. I didn't have a choice. What? I've already done it. Back in first grade when we moved here, my whole life changed. I was the pioneer. Oh, wow, Sully. I remember that. You were the new kid that year. You started a new life, like a pioneer. That must have felt confusing. Well, I'm glad you're here now. Me too. I like it here. I made new friends. You guys. Don't be surprised if your students want to talk about the personal connections they're making while they write in their journals. However, journal writing can be very private, so don't make sharing a requirement. You can always follow up with individual students when you read their work. When students can write about both your curriculum and their social emotional growth, they make personal connections with the content you teach. Use the student journaling strategy with your students so they can learn how to respond to and empathize with the world around them. Social and emotional learning plays an important role in your students' development and leads to an increase in academic performance and better behavior. As your students become more self-aware of their feelings and learn to control them, they become more focused, can empathize with others, build stronger classroom relationships, and make better choices. Take the time to engage your students with SEL activities and let them know when you ask this question that you mean it. How are you? This month on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to continue looking at social and emotional learning. 
we're going to provide some ways that teachers can follow up on information they get from SEL activities. We'll sit down with an expert educator to discuss important questions teachers have about social and emotional learning. At the end of the month, we're going to cover teacher wellness tips for how you can be mindful of your own emotional state. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get all of our upcoming professional development content. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Launch Your Classroom. It's got to be here somewhere. There you are. What are you looking for on David's desk? The instruction manual to this new hollow watch. David built it for me, so I figure if I can find the instructions, then maybe I can get back to my own body. Say, can you check that stack over there? Hologram. Here we go. The Mark II hollow watch. Ah, I see it. I was trying to access the active learning matrix and I accidentally hit the consciousness transferral button. <laughs> it was all my fault. I wonder why David didn't warn you. I don't know. I, he seems so distracted lately. Maybe, wait, what's this? The Explorer Class Launcher Classroom Teacher Support Vessel? David's been designing a spaceship in his spare time. And it looks like a real passion project. It's also clear now, David's creativity was focused on this spaceship, and I asked him to fast track the hollow watch. His heart was in this project. No wonder he's been so frustrated. Wow, it's been so enlightening getting to understand David and Roy's perspective. It really reminds you that you only see people for a small portion of their day. You don't always get to know what's going on outside of that time. But if you ask questions, keep an open mind, and be empathetic, you can avoid coming to the wrong conclusions and have more positive interactions. So, shouldn't I be jumping now? We solved the... See you soon, Kyle. I hope. Oh dear. <laughs>